Well, let's see here. I might not be Morgan Freeman, but this is... Classic Gamer Reviews. You ever play a game that's so good that it's physically painful? Well, growing up for me, that game was Mega Man Legends 2. Oh my god! Mega Man Legends 2! <laughs> the sequel to 1998's Mega Man Legends 1. Oh my god! Mega Man Legends! <laughs> A 3D action adventure game starring the Blue Bomber himself. Oh my god! They're right, Mega Man! <laughs> And while it may not be as well known of a game as other entries in the Mega Man series, it's still one hell of a ride. In the 90s, pretty much every video game character was transitioning into 3D, with varying success. Mega Man Legends 1 was one of the very few games that actually saw success in its transition, giving you large 3D worlds to explore, and the sequel expanded upon that by giving us so much more in a game that allows you to kick pigs. Repeatedly! Even if you're not familiar with the series, most of you have probably seen references to the game and may not have even known it. Remember this fighter from MVC3? Well, she came from Mega Man Legends. And who could forget these adorable guys from Dead Rising? Well, you guessed it, they came from Mega Man Legends. Even Pyramid Head from Silent Hill came from- Actually, don't listen to me, that's a lie. Mega Man Legends 2 takes place one year after the events of the original and has you playing as Mega Man Volnut on his search for answers involving the disappearance of Roll's parents and the series of Illumin Mother Lode. Mother Lode. A treasure of untold riches. All the while helping an ancient group of people known only as the Ancients recover four hidden keys to unlock said treasure. If all this sounds a bit more complicated than most Mega Man games, it's because it is. Confused? That's not surprising, I guess. Mega Man Legends 2 is a far cry from the older Defeat 8 Robot Masters and then Wily gimmick that's been used time and time again. It's a very story-based game, featuring a cast of outgoing characters that are all voice acted, something a bit rare for a game this time, and I had to say, the voice acting in this game is actually pretty good. <laughs> Susan? Uh, Mega Man's voiced by a girl? Why? Why indeed? Why is this something that no one can ever get right? Seriously, I mean, he's got the word man in his name. You'd think that they'd give him a guy's voice. I mean, Jesus Christ, even the first game got this correct. <sighs> Sorry, that's just something that's been on my chest since a child. Like a pair of boobs, which I don't have because I'm a guy. And I sound like a guy as well. Something Mega Man doesn't. Alright, anyway, the voice acting in this game, minus Mega Man's performance, is actually overall pretty good, with the real props going to the voice actor for Teasel Bond, the head leader of a group of pirates that are always having run-ins with Mega Man and friends. Um, what should we do with the toilet paper? We may be pirates, but we're not barbarians. We'll let them keep the toilet paper. He literally steals the show in every single scene he's in, and you can just tell how much fun he had with this role. Get it? Roll? On a side note, I guess he also had fun with kids. Aside from veering from the non-plot heavy Mega Man games of years past, Mega Man Legends also takes a far step from the gameplay of those Mega Man games. Seeing as how it's a 3D game, you can freely move around your environment as you blast away enemies, and although its combat against regular enemies may not be all that varied, what it does, it does well. Similar to games like Doom or Wolfenstein, the game finds a certain niche and it sticks with it. The only complaint about the combat is the lack of being able to switch targets once locked on. When surrounded by enemies, the lock-on often won't lock on to the enemy you want and oftentimes it can get you killed. A neat part of the game is that some of the battles you participate in can cause collateral damage that affect other characters in the game, and you get to see the consequences of your actions and failures play out. In fact, there's an actual karma system in the background of the game that affects the color of your armor and how people will treat you. Grab and shoot Roll in an inappropriate manner? She probably will write about it in her journal and think less of you. Accidentally walk in on her in the bath and see her nude, and she'll probably write about that in her journal as well. Spend your time kicking pigs, people will probably hate you, and be racist about it. It's 
because I'm black, isn't it? Or like a dark blue sort of thing. In fact, the racism's everywhere. What is it? Do you see something? I'm not picking up anything. Oh, what? Because she's not white, she doesn't count as a person? She doesn't fit into what you consider to be normal? While we're on the subject of walking in on roll and nudity, the game contains a scene that I still to this day don't understand. Early on, you're introduced to a young girl and she's legit full on nude. Keep in mind that this game is rated E for everyone with the only thing being in it violence, the game contains multiple scenes centered around nudity. At one point, blatantly showing you this girl's ass as Mega Man just stares at her like a dimwit. Die. I mean, come on, Mega Man, you live in a ship with just you, a monkey, and a girl. You're telling me you've never seen a pair of tits? Aside from that, in the previously mentioned walking and unroll in the tub scene, there's also a part where you blow the clothes off of one of the female pirates' body. Um, Miss Tron, your uh, clothes have been um, uh, kind of um, ripped up. Actually, your clothes are um, gone. I mean, God, with the amount of sexual encounters Mega Man gets in this game, the game should have been renamed to Mega Man Legends, Mega Man's Lucky Day. I'm not for or against the weirdly placed nudity, but I just find it odd considering that not even a full year later, Zone of the Enders came out and received an M rating for pretty much no apparent reason, and this game shows a girl's ass and has a scene like this. What do you think you're doing? and gets away with an E. When you're not walking in on Roland the Flutter, you'll be using the ship as a base of operations as you travel to various locations around the world. Though, it isn't exactly the safest place to be. WHY IS EVERYTHING ON FIRE?! On the Flutter, you can talk to Roll, where you're given the option to pay for damages done in the ship in the beginning of the game, allowing you to access more of the ship. Or, have her make and upgrade your weapons for you, but this isn't really all that helpful, since the game really only has one or two useful weapons. Uh, oh, a, a, a sprinkler might be helpful? Yeah, I could think of a few other examples where that might have helped too. Also, if you know, like, we practice fire drills. Get it? Fire drills? I usually just found myself resorting to the Buster Gun in most battles, but the inclusion of upgradable weapons does add variety to the game and stays in theme with Mega Man's history of getting new weapons. And as I say, it's always better to include something optional than not have it at all. When you're not on the Flutter, you'll be exploring the various environments in the game, and a huge part of what makes Mega Man Legends 2 so great is the sheer amount of things to see and do, and the amount of personality added into it all. The world is packed with things to interact with and NPCs to talk to, and Including the sexiest man alive, Envy is untrimmed chest. In terms of the objects you interact with, Mega Man usually has something to say about pretty much everything, and I mean everything. Good God, could it be? Uh, no, no, we're all good. Sadly, the pretty and overall charming environments pretty much come to a screech and halt once you enter ruins in the game, which you'll be doing a lot, seeing as how that's where each of the keys is located in. Aside from a few changes in color, there isn't that much distinguishing one ruin from the next. Sure, there's also varying dialogue and intel you'll get from Roll. I'm reading hot temperature. Is there lava around there? Nah, I'm on fire, you condescending bitch. But all have narrow hallways with pretty much the same textures, and each of the ruins only really contain three or four rooms that really separate itself from the others. You can't even see that far, which is odd, considering the draw distance is much better for the outdoor environments, which arguably have a lot more going on. Whether this is intentional or not, it gets old pretty fast. Thankfully, there's enough enemy variety in these ruins and fun boss fights within to keep them from being an absolute chore, but they are definitely the weak part of this game. The game is at its best when you're outside. In terms of difficulty, the game fluctuates a lot, with some bosses being laughably easy and others being painstakingly difficult. Regardless, they all still find a way to be fun, whether it's the dialogue happening in the fight, Come on, Mega Man! If you win, I'll buy you dinner! Or the overall epic scale of others. One thing that can't really be forgiven is an exploit in nearly half the boss battles. A lot of the time, you can just strafe around a boss in order to defeat them, or at the very least, get off a huge amount of their health. 
Now, this isn't always the case. Some bosses will compensate by shooting ahead of you, while others will place obstacles in the level, making it harder for you to strafe. Because of this, it pretty much seems like this was an exploit that the developers knew of, but for some strange reason, never decided to fix for about half the boss fights. Despite some of the exploitable boss fights, the game didn't contain a single one that I didn't find enjoyable in at least some aspect. As for the music, especially during boss fights, it fucking rocks. There's really not much to say when each and every track is better than the next. That's it. The music's great! Now, for anybody who's seen my videos before, you know I love Mega Man. Having played and beaten all the Super Nintendo Mega Man X games, I can say that without a doubt, none of those or any other game on the system comes as close to perfection as Mega Man X does. You may also know that Mega Man Legends 3 was cancelled by Capcom. OH MY GOD THEY CANCELLED THE Mega MAN LEGENDS 3?! <laughs> <laughs> and that I'm not really happy with that. Capcom, why the fuck did you cancel Mega Man Legends 3? Overall, I believe the Legends games were a criminally overlooked series that definitely deserved more attention than it got, and at the very least, was a series that deserved to at least be finished. But as it is now, it just has a cliffhanger. Sorry, Mega Man, but it looks like you might be stuck up there for a little while more. Well, ain't that the truth. It was the series containing humor, action, and adventure and packed it all into an unforgettable experience. It was a great branch off from its series and just a great time overall. But who knows? Maybe if we band together, say, I don't know, 100,000 of us, and all voice our opinion to Capcom, then maybe, just maybe, they'll listen. Oh. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Jouette, I made this video, and boy oh boy am I sorry that I haven't been active for a long time. I've been going through a lot. A long term relationship of mine ended, my computer broke, so I had to rebuy all my software and most of my equipment, and on top of that, my new job has been super busy. I just haven't had a lot of time to upload recently, but all that's changing now, so prepare to see a lot more content from me. For real this time. If you enjoyed the intro voice, check out Jason Stevens' website in the description below. He does loads of awesome celebrity impressions, and you can get one for yourself. Also, so check out Freddy Sal Animations, he made my intro, and I wanted to give a special shout out to Nathaniel Bandy, you can check out his stuff right here, for providing me with exclusive clips to use for this review. But, I need to start working on some new reviews, so until next time. <laughs>